All right, so you're learning math wrong. I think one of the big misconceptions that students have with why they're learning math wrong or how, like, why they're not the smart kid or why math is so hard for them is that some students understand math just naturally and some students don't. Like, you're just that not that math person. And one thing I've found from being a teacher and working with tons of students that struggle with math is I think the way that they approach learning math is a little bit different than those students that uh, we could say are more successful or are more math, uh, math people. And not to say there's some natural elements that you know students have with their mathematical ability, but I think the but I think that if we can overcome or look at math a little bit differently and how we're approaching it and how we're learning it, then we can better understand what it's going to take to be successful. And the funny thing is, everything that I'm going to talk about in this video is simple. It's very simple. Something that you've probably already heard before, um, but hopefully that I can go ahead and connect the dots from you, and you can see that. Just because it is simple does not mean it's easy. A lot of this stuff is hard. It's very difficult to do. You know it's easy, but guess what? It's easy not to do. Famous quote by Jim Rohn. And I love that because, you know, math does not have to be such a complicated topic um, or a complicated, you know, subject for many of us. And I think sometimes if we just kind of like break down to the elements of what how we need to approach learning math, we can start making some gains and that's what it's really about. I think everybody wants to kind of like hit the home run on the first pitch every single time. And no, it's sometimes it's just small steps of progression is what you're going to do to get to get um, to be successful in math. So let's go ahead and talk about the number one thing that I think if you are struggling with math, here is why you are learning math wrong. Because again, you're trying to understand what's going on and guess what? You don't know the basics. When I was in band, I remember that we all I wanted to do was play the really nice music, right? So I played the trombone in my high school band. And the trombone is not a very, let's just say, a sexy instrument. Like you basically, you know, you're not lot, you're not getting the uh, you're not in the front a lot, you know, like the trumpets, right? We're in the brass, but we're not as cool as the, as the, you know, the trumpets or the cornets. And so, you know, we're basically kind of playing backup within a lot of music. However, being inside the band, like we would play beautiful music and it was really cool. Like you wanted to be a part of that, but before you could get to that point, what did we have to do? We had to practice the most basic, Mary, Mary, had a little lamb, start practicing your chords and going through um, your scales. It was boring. It was basic. But guess what I learned from band is when you go ahead and practice those basics, you get a solid foundation of one, like your instrument, your lips and like the rhythm and everything else, how it's going and you get better at that. And the more you focus in on the basics, the easier and better it is for you to play more difficult pieces of music. Of course, we all want to go in and just be a part of the band and just be playing the most amazing music, but it takes practice and it takes practice of the really, really boring stuff that nobody really wants to do especially me. I hated doing that stuff. I hated practicing for band, but I found was doing, doing that really allowed me to um, understand the importance of having a strong foundation. And if we connect it back to math, it's the exact same thing. A lot of students just want to go ahead and get the grade. They just want to know how to do what they need to do for the test. I totally get it. I remember saying that to myself in my head when I was in high school. But I think the important thing is a lot of times we gloss over some of the most basic and foundational stuff just because like, oh, that's so easy. That's so simple. I just want to go ahead and like learn. The, I just need to know how to do the answer or like know how to do this type of problem. But I think that's the issue exactly right there. We have to make sure we have a solid foundation. And I can't tell you how many students that I taught that came all the way through pre-calculus, you know, AP calculus. They, they were in the advanced curriculum or the advanced, um, you know, cohort in our school. And there were some fundamental, um, fundamental mathematical ideas they had no idea about. They didn't know why things work. They didn't know how things work. They just kind of went through the system. So I think if you're struggling with math, typically what happens is you have a lack of foundational skills. You have what I like to call some of like the Swiss cheese mentality. You understand like the basics of how things sometimes to go on, but you're lacking some of those like understanding of why things work. And again, especially with math, as we've probably all known, you know, things build upon each other. So even though you might be able to get by one year or the next year, they keep on manifesting. And if you don't have a true understanding of some of the foundational basics, then it's just going to keep on getting bigger and bigger, right? It's just going to steamroll into eventually the rubber's going to hit the road and you're like, oh crap, I am struggling with math. I hate math. It's all math's fault. 
right? But if you can take a little bit of responsibility and be like, you know what, maybe I didn't learn what I needed to learn in this class. Maybe even if I got an A or my teacher was so nice and you know everything else, like maybe I didn't learn exactly what I need to. So I think it's really, really important to focus in on the basics, focus on the simple concepts for you to understand, and then you can go ahead and apply them. Or th therefore, then you can go ahead and move along. But the next thing that took around with band is one thing, again, as I mentioned, I hated, but I cannot tell you how important it was. I didn't do marching band very much because I was, I was actually playing football. But you think about this something, if you look about it like a marching band and you see they do like the halftime routine, right? And they're all playing. A lot of them do not even have sheet music. They, and they're going through like the steps of where they spin and make these nice little diagrams and they're marching. So they're marching, right? So they got that going on in their brain. They're also remembering the music that they have to play. And then also they're remembering like where they need to be and the timing and everything like that. It is crazy. If you actually look at it, if you're not like familiar with the process, there is so much going on for on any kind of a marching band when they're doing those performances. Now, a lot of times we even have like the, the uh, sheet music just in case we forgot things. But guess what? We practiced our routines so many times. It was basically ingrained in our brain. Right. So I would have my sheet music on my trombone just in case I forgot or just in case, you know, something came up and I needed to refer to it. But basically, I had we had practiced so many times. I mean, every single day we're going out there and, and practicing um, our the music. We're practicing where we need to be for the march. So by the time it came down to, you know, halftime show or our performance, we had a down pat. You know, right? there was nothing we needed to worry about. And that's the thing that I want you to focus in on with like mathematics. A lot of times students think that if they just understand something, it, they're good. Like, okay, I'm done. I understand this concept. I did my homework. I'm ready to go. Well, no, you got to sometimes think about your test, your exam. That is like the performance, right? You need to know your stuff so well that it's like, uh, that you're like, you have confidence just like beaming out of your skin. Right. And that is going to come through that for you doing deliberate practice. And again, you want to make sure you're doing it correctly. Right. Again, if you're doing March, if you're playing the music wrong, that's not going to help you. Right. You got to make sure you're doing the problems right, but you are practicing. And one thing I found, and again, this is a variable, right? Some students are going to need way more practice than other students. So I think you have to understand yourself and your capacity in this, in this point. But I think it's really important that a lot of students will be like, Mr. McLogan, I understood everything for my test and I still failed. Like, I don't know what's wrong. Like I'm studying, I was doing, I did everything you asked me to do, but I still did bad. And what I tell them, you didn't practice enough. You need to be doing more. I can only provide so much. I'm not going to give you like a hundred math problems to go and do for a test. Most students don't need to do that, nor do I want to require any student to do that much work. However, some students just need more practice than others, right? Even a band, a lot of people, they can memorize a piece of music much faster than others are going to memorize a piece of music. So understand yourself, but also understand that just because what your teacher assigned or what's in the book is good enough, right? If you truly want to make sure that you are ready, prepared, and understand the information, once you understand the material, practice it, practice it, practice it. And then again, once you move on to it, guess what? You should always continuously going be, go, be going back and practicing that material. That's what we call like the spiral review. Something I did for my homework. I always added extra problems from previous chapters because I didn't want you to forget the material. It's something you should be always going through the motions. But again, it's deliberate practice, making sure you're doing it correctly. If you're just doing, if you're just doing busy work, that's not going to help you out. But that's why I'm always a proponent of homework because I do truly believe of practicing is going to help you refine your skills. But the next thing, if you're not using what you're doing and you're just doing practice, it is going to feel like busy work. It's just going to feel like this mindless, numbing work and you're going to hate it. I think that's why a lot of students really, really hate mathematics. They're like, this is just boring. I'm just doing the step by step by step by step, you know, process. But you have to understand that you're not a robot and we don't want a like we can hire or not even hire, we can use software to go ahead and tell us what to do. And then they're going to do like any mathematical system much faster than we are. Right. So the whole idea of like you practicing is for you to get a solid foundation of, of that, whatever the skill or process that you're doing. 
But again, in reality, human beings that we're not the most efficient at doing that, right? It's going to be it's going to be robots, it's going to be AI, it's going to be something that we can be able to use that we can teach to be able to do just that. So the importance though of the next thing is you have to be able to apply things and understand things in context because that's something that, yeah, you could maybe make the argument machine learning is going to get to. Um, but I think the value of you as a person is being able to go a little bit deeper into just your, um, into just doing like what you need to be doing for your homework. So the, the way that I can, you know, kind of bring this into is like, if I'm teaching you how to do a process and you need to, you're trying to learn and you're trying to get prepared for your math. You know, yes, understanding the basics, good. Knowing how to do the process and practicing it over and over, good. But here's the next step. If you really, really want to dive deep and really understand the context of what you're doing, why you're doing it, and how it's going to be important, is you need to make sure you are applying that. And one of the ways that we use that is word problems. And one of the worries that math makes math horrible is by some of the word problems we choose. So it doesn't always have to be word problems. Some math content is much more applicable to like an actual word problem than, you know, other pieces of math. But sometimes it can just be different types of problems that are related around that are related around to your concept. I really do think it is important though that you need to be able to branch out because here's the thing that a lot of students will do. They understand the foundation basics. They understand the practice. They will practice over and over. But guess what gets them tricked up on the test? Is when I give them a problem that they've like never seen before or that I switch things around just enough that it's confusing to them. They're like, wait a minute, I know how to do X, Y, Z, but what is this? Like, I don't know how to do this. And they are done. They shut down, right? And so you have to understand, you have to be able to adapt. You have to be able to understand what the problem is asking and how you can use what you know to be able to apply it to a different scenario that you might not have been initially practiced or prepared for. That is what comes into when you actually apply the information that you're using, right? It's not just doing the mathematical algorithm that was in the examples in the textbook, but start looking at different types of problems that you can use that information to apply to answer different questions that are related. Maybe some more, ex um, maybe some more difficult problems that get you prepared for some different, you know, some later chapters in the book. A lot of times the problems in the back of the book have excellent problems like this, where you can kind of see how they use what they're teaching you um, in different types of problems. So, I think also just not know, just not practicing what you're doing, but then also being able to apply it into different scenarios. That's how things are really going to stick. That is how you can turn yourself into somebody that feels like you're learn. No matter how hard you try, no matter how much work you do, no matter how much practice or um, or attention you pay, you're still just not learning math. And sometimes it's kind of hard to sometimes swallow the pill but it might be the way that you're approaching learning math. And hopefully if you can focus on those basics, focus on practice and focus on applying, stretching yourself when learning this content, you're not gonna be learning math wrong, but you're gonna be learning math successfully. Now, I mentioned three things, but there's one thing that I did not mention. And it's one, one of my key, and it's one of the keys that I believe that really can turn students from a struggling math student to an excellent math student. So, but that next bonus tip, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. That is not, we do not have any more time for that. We'll go and get into your questions, but don't put questions in for that third one because I have a good video that's all about on that. So that's going to be on the next one um, in my next video that I'll have for you guys coming up. So um, anyways, if you guys have any more questions, I'd love to go and get to them.